All right, let's get started. So today's topic is modern insurance and voice computing. And the reason why I say modern is because millennials are one of the most prolific users of digital assistants. My name is Shafi Benhuda and I'm the co-founder of Coverager. And at Coverager, we're pretty much looking to kind of push insurers beyond the conventional boundaries of insurance. And we operate under three pillars, right? News, knowledge, and network. We've been tracking voice computing skills since 2017. Currently, we're tracking 44 skills developed by 40 insurance brands across North America, Australia, Europe, and Asia. But for the most part, the bulk of the research is centered in the US. So I don't know anyone that is not following Amazon or listening to what Jeff Bezos is saying or pretty much commenting on his uh, kind of recent divorce settlement, but in all seriousness, he does not hide his intentions for Alexa. So I do wanna share kind of a few trends that we're seeing with Alexa skills. First, its ability to understand and you know, reply back to questions being asked has improved by 20% in 2018 compared to 2017. In addition, there's almost more than 80,000 skills um, nowadays that are available for Alexa, and that number is expected to grow significantly because Amazon this year announced that it's opening up the platform for amateurs. So the understanding is very little coding is required in order to be able to develop uh, another skill. And then just this week, basically Amazon announced its HIPAA compliant platform. So you can expect more healthcare skills being launched. And I'll talk about that a little bit more when we talk about healthcare. But if I had to summarize this trend, I would say that this is mostly um, a developing trend. And the key word here is developing. So quality and quantity rarely go hand in hand. And what we're seeing with this skill is despite the platform being almost or a little bit over four years old, there's no one killer voice app. And where we are seeing usage is very much kind of in the frequent daily um, kind of regular routine tasks. But let's look at these end users and what we can tell about them so far. So 63% of owners uh, place their smart speakers in the living room, right? So it tells, tells a little bit about the mindset of why you're actually you know, buying an Alexa. For the most part, it's being used to listen to music, followed by obtaining you know, a weather forecast and setting some like really clear reminders or alerts, so very simple. And occasionally you're going to see a success story like the one shared by August CEO, which basically says, or he actually contributes, the revenue growth in 2018, um, part because of smart speakers. So in his mind, uh, when people buy smart speakers or looking to do something extra with them, perhaps turn on the light, and that contribute, contributed to growth in, uh, or to his bottom line. So August, for those of you who don't know, is a smart home technology player that was uh, Liberty Mutual Strategic Ventures in, invested in this company, probably made a nice return because they did get acquired by a Swiss company. And they, they create video doorbells and, and smart locks, et cetera. But none of this is uh, kind of happening in the insurance domain and probably because insurance is more of a low frequency product. So I can't take this kind of a success story and apply it to what we're seeing in insurance. So let's take a look at what is actually happening in our space. Uh, but before that, uh, kind of a, an early mover in the space is Allianz Insurance Services, which in April 2017 announced their skill, their Amazon skill to get a car insurance quote, uh, which is innovative in itself because not a lot of people go the extra mile to actually um, offer folks uh, the ability to get a quote. And the driver behind this innovation was kind of twofold. One, stay on top with current technology and two, find ways to connect with clients in exciting ways, right? So what's happening in insurance? Well, 89% of skills are developed by insurance companies, insurers. Majority of skills, 85% are available for Amazon. Only a portion are available for Google. Only 20% allow you to get a quote. And for the most part, there's a balance between skills that are targeting prospects and customers, which are actually policyholders. And the difference is that sometimes you're going to see skills that allow you to connect your account and then you can get detailed personalized information. 25% of skills um, allow you to demystify insurance terms. What is comp? What is collision? So very, I mean, you can't get any more plain vanilla than that. And then there's like 9% 9, 9 of skills, which really boils down to three insurers that go beyond insurance. And this point, this kind of is really interesting because 
being that insurance is a low frequency product, being that you're meant to use, uh, you're, you're meant to interact with Alexa a little bit more, we have to, we, we can look at what insurers are doing um, a, a bit more creatively than the core offering of insurance to see how they, they're looking to increase adoption. So three, co three companies to note, one is Travelers, which, is off, which offers like maintenance tips around the home. American Family, true to its brand, basically allows people to hear a daily dream tip. Allstate, again, true to his brand, the, the you're in good hands, allows folks to, to get a good idea every day. So very much positive vibe and just listen to hacks around the home. Not very far from insurance from the core offering, but still, you know, not per se, get a quote or uh, understand a term here or there. So the smallest subset of uh, voice assistance skills that are currently operational operate in the healthcare, right? Only 13.6% apply in healthcare. I do think that number is going to go up simply because of what Amazon announced um, this week. So a bit of current events, basically Amazon said that they have a HIPAA com compliant environment. They're, they currently have six players, Cigna is one. And the idea is to allow folks to track their prescription, um, understand what they do post hospitalization uh, stay, share their recovery, book an appointment, et cetera. So I think you're, we're gonna see more, more of that coming. But for now, if I just look from an insurance perspective, then it's the ability to get a health insurance quote, answer FAQs, locate nearby hospital, and retrieve medical information. When you retrieve medical information, you do have to connect your account. The second largest subset um, is voice skills that are operating in the life and health insurance um, and products. And so beyond the, the simple get a travel insurance quote or what Ladder is doing, right? Get an estimate for life insurance. Um, companies like Viva and Prudential allow you to check your retirement balance. So let's pause, let's pause here for a second because there's a company called Vestwell, which you should be familiar with, and it's a digital retirement platform. And they recently did a survey in which they look at um, how many people check their retirement balance on a daily basis. So 14.6% um, is, is a number that check it daily, right? So not a lot of, of activity, not a lot of traction for, again, a skill or for technology that is meant to be used frequently. And obviously, very similar to what is happening in the insure tech trends overall, the largest or, you know, the, the largest group of voice assistants operate in the PNC insurance space, very similar to what I've mentioned before, getting a car or home insurance estimate, locating an agent and tracking claims. When you track claims, you do have to connect to your account. And that, that seems to be something that's useful according to some of the reviews online. Also important to note, um, Geico, which was uh, an early mover in the space, they launched their skill in December of 2017. And when they did launch it, it was for a variety of options, right? You could request ID cards, check account balance, and request vehicle assistance. Interestingly enough, fast forward to, to this year, right now the, the skill boils down to understanding insurance terms, uh, but their Amazon page does indicate that they're going to be bringing back all these features again. So definitely something that coverage or here is tracking. So feedback, well, one feedback or actually one side note that talks about the challenge of voice skills is when you're looking at manual life benefits, which says that you can use the skill to understand how much balance you have left. But then there is kind of the fine print that says, well, our internal systems will prevail in case there is any discrepancy, right? So not 100% confidence in the technology or the data that the skill provides. In terms of users and what they're basically saying, well, um, until it actually gives me a policy details, does the app give me any purpose that Google doesn't? Well, if you're not connecting your account, if it's just about demystifying another insurance term, if it's just about getting a quote, you can obviously do all these things online using, using Google. And then another feedback, that this is basically useless. We need to be able to sign in, receive payment reminders and notifications, right? Again, talking about the personalization or the personal, personalization aspect of offering this skill. So all in all, I think, um, you know, it's kind of like that zero times one, zero times one equals zero. So we have a low frequency product um, with technology that's meant to be used. And in terms of traction, we're not yet seeing traction. So 62% of skills enjoy at least one customer rating. This basically translates to 40% of skills that have no ratings at all. And even uh, among the skills that do have ratings, 30% are reviewed by less than five users. So it's, there's not much to, to rely on in terms of where this, this is heading, right? And on average, um, there's 8% of ratings per skill. When there, when there are ratings, that those ratings are typically high, so four star. So I think all in all, um, I'll summarize this skill best by saying that this is a developing trend, and the key word is developing. 
So, you know, kudos for just those that are embracing the technology early on, but then you still have to kind of keep in the back of your head that DNA of insurance and where you want to play. So maybe a better route is playing where travelers and all state and American family are trying to play, which is outside the realms of the core insurance product. Um, and that's, that's all for today. It's meant to be a short session and I will catch you all next week. Bye.